Troubleshooting is not basically different for centrifugal pumps. As with reciprocating pumps, you must recognize unusual conditions, find what is wrong, and fix it. You may notice most centrifugal pump troubles just after startup. And the most common trouble may be a low, even zero, pumping rate. Given this situation, what is wrong? There are three possible trouble areas. They are in A, the pump suction system, B, the pump itself, including its driver, and C, the pump discharge system. Let's look at the discharge system first. Is the discharge pressure higher than usual? If so, it's likely that a valve in the discharge system is partly closed. Pumping rate may be low because of the high head required to overcome this restriction. If discharge pressure is low and pumping rate is low or zero, the trouble is not in the discharge system. One very likely trouble, the pump is not primed. Running without being primed risks damage to mechanical seals. If priming does not remedy the trouble, you may decide to make some suction system checks next. The end of the suction line may be incompletely submerged because of a low level in the vessel. Possible remedies include stop pumping or provide more liquid. Low suction pressure may also indicate that the suction strainer needs cleaning. Low suction pressure erratic discharge pressure and a rattling noise in the pump may indicate cavitation caused by insufficient suction head. Since cavitation is caused by vaporization in the impeller eye, it can be stopped by increasing pressure. Therefore, be sure the suction line is unobstructed, valves open, strainer clean. Increase suction head, if feasible, by raising the liquid level in the vessel. And, if necessary, throttle the discharge valve until cavitation stops. You must recognize, of course, that you cannot get full rate with the discharge throttled. Low rate and low discharge pressure when there are no troubles in either discharge or suction systems must be the fault of the pump itself. The pump may be rotating in the wrong direction. An arrow on the pump casing shows proper rotation. Improper rotation occurs if a motor has been connected improperly. The pump speed may be too slow. You may need to have the speed checked. The impeller may be partially or completely clogged or damaged. It may be that wear rings are worn, or the packing or seal is defective. To check these things and make repairs or replacements, you may need skilled help. Sometimes the first evidence we have of pump trouble is that the power draw is greater than normal. Power requirement increases if the pump is rotating in the wrong direction, if its casing is distorted from strain of improperly supported piping, or if other mechanical defects exist. Some pump troubles are evidenced by overheating. A pump casing may overheat because of closed discharge valve, check valve closed and stuck, or back pressure too high. Bearings will run hot if they're improperly lubricated. They must have both the right amount and right kind of lubricant. Your unit operating procedures will tell you what lubricants to use. The more you learn about the normal operation of your pumps, the easier your troubleshooting will be. Now turn to workbook number two and complete exercise 4.1.
21.